Hello and thank you for joining us on the Capital Point. My name is Terry Ann Chibet. Now the conversation around the future of work has taken center stage globally. A cross section of stakeholders agree that workers of the future will now need a new set of skills to compete. In fact, the World Bank says that skills will be the currency of the labor market. Business leaders now have to more than ever examine the impact that technology has had on how we live, how we communicate and how we do business. And of course, how that could change over the next couple of years. Technological advances have resulted in automation technology like artificial intelligence, that's AI, and robotics, and so much more. And the question begs, what will this mean for jobs, for skills and for wages? Let's look at what the data is telling us. And first, we'll look at some of the key trends uh, that are shaping a conversation around the future of work. One is artificial intelligence, as I've mentioned just now. And we'll be looking in just a moment into what this means for jobs of the future. And of course, artificial intelligence has led to automation, where some say machines will completely replace people. Or will they really? And that's a question that we'll be asking our expert in studio as well. Another thing, a conversation that's ongoing around the future of work, will we have enough work and jobs left when the future of jobs finally gets here? Changing models for work and work structure is also a big conversation around the future of work. And independent work, also known as the gig economy, where a number of people are now willing to work from home for the flexibility, also called the flexi economy. And as I've mentioned before, skills are the currency for the new labor market. What kind of skills should our young people be thinking of as we get to the future of work? Let's look at 2030 in focus now and some interesting numbers that we're seeing out of uh, different uh, data places that we found 60% of jobs, of the jobs of the future, do not exist today. And of course, this means that only 40% of jobs that exist today will be marketable in the next few years. An example of the Canadian Army recruitment farm, for example, which has invested in automation, with one machine now handling the work that would be ideally done by 55 recruiters. Data also shows that millennials will make up to 75% of the global workforce. That goes without debate, of course. And because Africa will be home to the world's largest number of young people, we need to ask ourselves, is the continent preparing its labor force for a global office? The gig economy uh, will take up the majority of the workforce. Um, let's as now have a look at the age of automation, um, according to the World Bank. And it looks at some interesting statistics Oh, and just before we get to that, let's look at the gig economy, which I've mentioned just now. Uh, a country like es Estonia, for instance, where more than 50,000 people from around the world are e-residents of the country. Now, after this was launched in the year 2014. With e-residency, one sets can set up a business online in Estonia from anywhere in the world. The country is now launching a visa for digital nomads. Of course, these are for employees who work remotely around the world. The future <laughs> is already here. The age of automation, uh, this looks at the population that is ready for automation. South Africa ranked at 41%, that's according to data from the World Bank. Ethiopia, 44%, Nigeria, 46%, and Kenya, 52%. The World Bank predicts that 41% of all work activities in South Africa are susceptible to automation. 44 in Ethiopia, 46 in Nigeria, and 52% in Kenya. All right, we'll take a quick break now, and when we come back, we'll be speaking to Natalia Polishuk, the MD of Just Work, and we'll be delving into the issues of the future of work, and some of the questions I'll be asking or we, that well, we will be focusing on as a young person, are you prepared for the work of the future? As a business, are you preparing yourselves for the future? And as government, are we setting the right policies for the future of work? Don't go too far. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> 